What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis, of course, TWA Motorsports here. And today we've got the green truck on the lift. Well, uh-oh, what's wrong with it? Actually, there is something wrong with it. But the main reason it's up on the lift, we are going to talk about, we are going to address today. And guys, what it is, is look, I've been driving the Stepside GMC, the new one that I showed you guys on the channel a while back. That thing has uh, long tubes and it has like true duels into dual mufflers and it's loud and it's annoying loud. It's too loud actually, but I kind of like a little throatier sound than what the green truck's giving me. So when I put the green truck together originally guys, uh, it does have long tubes, it does have off-road wide pipe, but I put the stock cat back back on it. And so I did that because I didn't want it ridiculous, ridiculously loud. And, but now we're gonna change that today. But the other thing, the main reason, okay, so that's the main reason really. But the other reason is now that the transmission's broken in, everything's running good, the converter's working great. When I give this thing gas, like kind of lean on it, it has this like tinny vibration that sound towards the back. And I know it's gotta be like a heat shield or something. So we're gonna look into that today. I've already looked under it, I haven't found anything, but we're gonna take a heat shield off. But anyway, let's get under this thing and look at what we've currently started with. Like I said, guys, um, when I put this thing together originally, I put the stock six cylinder cat back back on it. It's all the same, whether you buy a six cylinder or you buy a V8 truck, it has the same cat back. What I think is happening is I think it's either rattling, the exhaust is rattling on the rear end because it's so low, or this heat shield up here, it's kind of that sound, like a tinny sound, like something's hitting that. So it could be both. Um, I haven't noticed it if I'm just driving around. It's when I kind of gag on it that it does that. But anyway, this is two and three quarters is what the stock exhaust setup is, unless you have like a Duramax and then they're three and a half. But so this piping here next down from three inch off the Y pipe down to two and three quarters. So what we're gonna be replacing it with today is a true three inch all the way back to the muffler. We'll go and look at that in a second. But I will tell you guys, there's another thing that I wanna do while I'm under here. And that is when I bought these headers. So I bought these headers during COVID when I was doing all this stuff and speed engineering did not have anything available. You can see I've been dragging this Y pipe. Um, so this fitment is not as good as the speed engineering. And these are some eBay cheapies. Um, now they are stainless, but I bought them off eBay because that was the only thing available unless I wanted to go to like an American racing header. And ultimately guys down the road, I thought I may do a um, turbo setup. So I didn't want to spend a bunch of money on a set of headers knowing that eventually they would come off I just didn't want to and speed engineering wasn't available. So I've got another issue up here where this header on this side is almost touching the frame and occasionally when the engine gets some torque, it will touch the frame. So I'm thinking I've got some heat shielding or some like wrap, exhaust wrap. I'm gonna see if I can get that up in there and maybe wrap in between the frame and there and see if that helps. It may not, it may be a lost cause, but either way guys, this is normally not the setup I would buy. I would choose speed engineering on these. I've used them several times, they fit great. I will tell you that the Y pipe here, I had to reorder. It is speed engineering, but the rest of this is not. So the headers are not. And so um, I did have to replace this now that I think about it. But either way, so that one, you know, it's a close fit here, but it gets around the 4L80, no issues whatsoever. So those are the things we're going to address today. We're gonna see if we can do that, but let's go look at what we've got laying over here. Um, you can see that we've got new exhaust. And like I said, this comes from Speed Engineering. Now, I, here's what I will tell you guys. I wish that they would do things a little differently as far as their pricing is concerned. I wanna see this is about $550 for this whole setup here, but I'm only gonna use three pieces of this. I'm gonna use the short piece that you see up there, the intermediate pipe. I'm gonna use a muffler and I'm gonna use a turn down. That's where we're gonna start. You have to get all of this stuff when you order this kit. You do not have the option to just buy certain pieces. You can buy all of it or you can buy none of it. So with that being said, the long piece that you see is for a crew cab or an extended cab truck to make it reach a little further. I don't need that. I'm not gonna use the tailpipe or at least I don't think I'm gonna be using the tailpipe. If it's really loud, we may put it on there and see what it sounds like with it. Um, and the other thing guys is if I don't like the sound of that muffler, I may keep the intermediate and the turndown and buy a different muffler. So we're just going to see, we're going to, we're going to experiment today because I've never used any of their catback stuff. I've used a lot of their headers guys. They fit great. Uh, I will tell you, I've only used them on, um, F bodies and 
these trucks. So these body style trucks. I've never used them on a Corvette. I always buy American Racing headers when I go on a Corvette. Um, I don't know why. I've never tried any speed engineering on them. It's just, I like the fitment of the American Racing headers on a Corvette. They're a little tighter, uh, a little less room than what you have here. I will tell you on an inch and seven eighths header, when I had them on this red car, they I did have to grind on the K member a little to get them to fit. But other than that, the floor and whatnot, everything fit fine. So that is what we are using. Uh, I hate that we have to, you know, we're, we're not using all this stuff, but I talked to a buddy, he may be using this for his crew cab truck. He may buy a muffler or whatnot, but either way, it'll get used at some point. But let's get started. I wanna get that old exhaust off. It looks nasty. This is obviously gonna look better. I know it's gonna sound better. I really wish I would've got you guys a before clip, but you guys have heard it in a couple videos, so you could go back and check that out. It is really, really quiet. Um, as a matter of fact, you can kind of tell it has a cam because it's got a little bit of a choppy idle, but very, like it's not a very aggressive cam like most people wouldn't notice unless they've heard a lot of these trucks. So let's get um, the light under there and let's rip some stuff off. So we're going to actually start right here where the intermediate pipe connects to the Y pipe. I'm hoping guys that I have to mess with the Y pipe. There's this little piece that you can loosen up. If we have to tweak things and whatnot, we may have to do that. But um, I'm using the bolts that came with this. I believe they're an 18 millimeter, 15 millimeter. Just depends on what exhaust that um, you had on it before. But let's get at least that. I could tell you another place that looks like it may be hitting is right here. We may wrap that too. Let's just see how the, we'll see how it fits once we get that new piece up in here. But let's worry about getting this out first. So I got those loose, but I think I'm gonna have to replace them. Check out the threads on them. I had to use some uh, WD-40 just to get them loose. Now we can move on back here. Go, I'm gonna go grab a pry bar, see if we can pry this uh, muffler out of this rubber bushing back here. A lot of times if you use a pry bar kind of in between those, you can get it loose. So that's our goal. And uh, we'll have another one back here right above right close to the rear end and there's one in the very back but those shouldn't be as bad this should be the toughest one to get started then maybe we can pull this old exhaust out now once we've got it out of all those um, we're gonna attempt to walk it out of here I don't know how it's gonna work we're gonna see I think it's gonna work I remember how I did this I may have to cut it can't go any further forward. Interesting. How did I do this? Maybe I can go backwards. No, I can't think I can clear. Oh, the joys of a lowered truck, guys. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make this nice and easy. I'm going to cut it right here back in the back. So right behind. We're going to see the camera here. Let's see if I can get it in focus. We're gonna cut it right there. I don't need this. It's just gonna go in the scrap pile anyway. And so uh, I probably should have thought about this before I took it all loose. I'm not, I'm trying to remember how I did this originally. I think what I did was, I think I had the rear end out maybe, and I just went ahead and, or I left the exhaust in, one of the two. But either way, let's get a Sawzall and cut it right here. Should have left the camera on for that. I thought it'd maybe stay, but the whole exhaust fell out of the bottom and took my light with it. Um, but, hey, we're loose. <laughs> oh man. Like I said, guys, the joys of a lowered truck. All right, let's go grab our new intermediate pipe and we'll start with that. We'll thread it up, um, up to the front here over this middle cross member. Let me turn you guys a little bit so you can maybe see a little better. So that area right here, we're gonna move it up over this cross member and uh, see what it is we need as far as putting it on. Like, I think I'm gonna have to get some new bolts. Uh, and then I'm looking for any marks I see on like the heat shield. I'm gonna take this heat shield off while we've got this all apart because look, the muffler sets up here there doesn't even need to be a heat shield here, to be honest with you. That's for the exhaust that's supposed to go over um, the top side of the bed. I just don't see the need in having that there. 
As a matter of fact, most of these guys, when they notch these trucks, if you put a bigger notch in, you've got to trim this piece out anyway. You can't have it there. So I'm going to take it out as well. This piece goes in here like this. Holy cow. I don't know, guys. I mean, that'll... Let's just go ahead and put it in this exhaust hanger. Ain't gonna hurt anything. You can always take it out if we had to. It's really, really long. Okay, that lines up, which is good. Now we're gonna need a muffler. Oh no. I think we're hitting anything. So that looks okay. Other than, I don't know, we'll have to, we're, we're gonna leave it loose for now, but I may have to turn that flange up there where it bolts the Y pipe. I just don't love the way this is setting right now, but either way, let's go grab the muffler and the little turn down piece. And then we're gonna put it obviously at the end of all this stuff our hanger for our turn down. The turn down, the clamp for the turn down and the back of the muffler goes on this guy. So we'll test fit that as well. It only comes with two clamps. It comes with a clamp for the front side of the muffler that goes up here. You go ahead and put that on. But then it comes with this style clamp, which should, you know, set in something like that. I need to go get the piece of rubber off my old exhaust. And uh, as a matter of fact, maybe we could use this one. They're all the same. Let's just put it here. I don't want to be holding all this. So the only way this makes sense is this direction. It would be hitting the exhaust the other way, but that clamp clamps your turn down on. Let's go grab the muffler. Okay. As far as the muffler goes, there is no in or out, apparently. Let's set it up on here for now and see what we've got. We're turned down. Let's see if we can put this in place. Okay, makes sense. Our turn down in. Oh yeah, that's pretty low. That sets really, really low. I think, I think it'll come up as we uh, tighten the front, and it is not the lowest point on the truck, but man, it's low. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll, maybe I'm, okay, there we go. That's better, that's better. We're gonna have to negotiate back and forth. We may have to tighten this clamp just a little bit, maybe like here, and then tighten it up front here that's the way exhaust works guys it's never all trucks are just a little different you're never going to get one that's you know they're not all the same so what i think i will do is we'll start up front here with tightening these and like i said i may have to uh, loosen that piece to get this started and kind of get it placed where i want it because right now if you're looking down the end of the truck it's not the lowest point, but man, it's pretty low. The cross member up front and the Y pipe are still a little lower. I don't know, we'll give it a shot. Let's take a look at what I did. So I loosened this one. I pushed it back just a little bit. When I did that, when it, once it was loose, this one was bolted together and snug down. I was able to spin this whole pipe where we got way more clearance there. Now it's still close, but it's nice and square. It's like a right angle. What I may do guys, my dad was just out here and he suggested this, just get like a little rubber grommet. You could either cut this off, like it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna slide out of that, but you could put a, like a rubber grommet on the end of that if it was actually hitting the bed or the uh, frame, I mean. But back here, this one is nice and straight now. And so I went ahead and just snugged everything up. I kept snugging it, checking to see if it was square. And once I got that spun around, guys, I don't know if you can tell, but it's not lower than any of the front exhaust. So it's actually, when you look at it from the side, it's higher than the gas tank. 
See the gas tank underneath it? I'm perfectly square with it right now. Now it's not a lot. And the tip may be a problem, but you know how I am. I'm impatient. I wanna hear it. So I'm gonna snug these down a couple more turns probably with the impact. And then we're gonna drop it down and we're gonna take a listen before we do anything else. Um, I will tell you that we're really close here, but I am like hanging up and down on this thing and it doesn't act like it's gonna hit the floor there. Another thing to watch. So either way, let's uh, snug these down. Let's set you guys back on the tripod and let's give it a first start. Got it set down so I can actually get in it. Let's give it a start. It's probably not gonna come through great on the camera, but I'll know. Now before, obviously it's still night, but um, before I take it out for a drive, I'm not gonna wrap anything because once I tweaked that exhaust up there, it looked like I maybe pulled the header over a little bit even. So I'm not gonna put the exhaust wrapped on right now. We're gonna give it a test without that, but here's what I do wanna do. I wanna take this heat shield off, guys. And I'm sitting back here looking at this, and I took one of these, they're T25s that hold these things in. So obviously, you know, you can get to majority of them, but look at this one right here. Like who, obviously, here's how this was done. From the factory, this was put on before the bed went on. So I've got two options here. I can take all eight bed bolts out, lift the bed up just enough to get that unbolted, or I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna drill a hole right here and I will be able to then get my T25 through. I have a smaller T25 also, so I don't have to drill a very big hole and I'm never gonna use this again. Unfortunately, these are um, welded from the factory to the frame, so you can't really do much with that either. I could cut that off completely, but I'm not gonna go to that much, at least with the bed on. I, I would like to sometime down the road, guys, take the bed off of this thing and maybe change up the suspension. So that may be something we do down the road. Uh, but the other thing is if I do that, if I take the bed off, I would like to clean this frame up and you guys know how I am. I'm very picky about stuff. Uh, I would like to paint it to make it look nice. So that may be something that we get into down the road. But for now, I'm gonna go ahead and take all these T25s out. I'm gonna drill this hole right here and get this one out. And we're gonna get this plate out of the way because like I said, I think that could be what I'm hearing. Got the thing out, but oh man, what a fight it was, guys. So here's the deal. Drilled the hole like I said it was gonna do, okay? Got started on that one. So we took that one out. You guys saw that one was out. We start on this one, it strips. So I had to use a pair of channel locks to grip on the end of it and make quarter turns at a time and it fights almost the entire way out. There's another eight or no, six more after you get those two in the back. I stripped the one out above the rear end as well. But did the same thing with channel locks. The other five came out fine. But either way, I wish they were just regular bolt heads. They're torques and that's what screws you up is because they're torque heads. So either way, we got it out. It's sitting over there with the uh, muffler that we took out. And um, yeah, we're gonna go, the next thing you guys are gonna see will be us take this thing down the road and uh, see if we got any rattles still. Next morning, we're gonna take this thing out for a drive, but before we do, I don't know why, maybe somebody did, made a comment about this, like, hey, Travis, how do you sleep at night knowing this wiring here looks this terrible? I get it, guys. So we're gonna fix this real quick. I'm gonna cut, I'm never gonna put a trailer on this, guys. Uh, that's what this is. It's part of a trailer harness. You can see a four flat right there. We're gonna unwrap all this. I'm gonna cut this back and uh, just make this look a little nicer. That looks terrible. And I thought maybe one of these days, if I did the suspension stuff I talked about, we may knock that out then, but 
it's it's here i can reach it i'm gonna knock that out real quick but the next thing you're going to see i may show you guys this as a matter of fact i'm gonna knock this out real quick clean this up i'll show it to you and then we're gonna get it off the lift and take it for a drive definitely a lot better got all that junk out of there so normally guys like my dad was out here while i was messing with this and he was like you know i think that just unplugs and some of them do you can just unplug it from the junction box but this one runs up into the main harness that goes up to the front of the truck so i'm not going to mess with pulling all that out um we're just going to leave it for now just like that's kind of how the factory had it tied up except it had uh, splices on it so either way let's get this thing down and uh, take it for a ride listen to it out here before we go it's definitely louder man this thing's dusty and dirty I need to wash it so I think what I'll do guys is we'll ride in the truck and see and then uh, I may set a tripod up up front and blaze back and forth and uh we'll we'll go from there and see kind of what it sounds like well all right so you have to consider too guys that this thing has a ton of uh kill mat in it so we did the floors we did the the back here we did the roof and so you know it may be louder in your truck but i can tell you it's definitely louder but it doesn't seem to be like annoying loud like you know like tractor loud or cut off cherry bomb loud or something like that i'm more concerned like on the highway runs you know like when i'm going 60 miles an hour i don't want a ton of drone in this cab take it um, we'll take it like 60 miles an hour down the highway and we'll kind of see what the noise level is at 60 I, I think it's gonna be just right on the verge of where I don't want it well before I even got to the 60 mile an hour zone area where I can go 60 it's rattling right there on the floor remember where I said I needed to turn it to make it um, not hit the floor and it was really close it's literally like on the passenger side right there where the floor bends up uh it rattled while i was coasting but we're in this area now where we can do 60. so there's 60 miles an hour and honestly guys i hear just as much wind noise as exhaust it's not like annoyingly i mean you can hear a little exhaust i'd say on if I were to give it a, a 1 to 10 on drone in the cab, I'd probably give it a 4. I mean, obviously, it's not as quiet as the stock exhaust. But I, like I said, I can hear just as much wind noise and tire noise. So I think we can live with this. I like, you know, I don't daily drive this truck, but when I do drive it, sometimes, you know, I want to, like, Obviously, we put a stereo in it and stuff. I want to be able to hear the radio, and we're not going to have any problems with that. What I am going to have to do, though, is when we get back to the shop, I'm going to um, I'm going to put it back up on the lift, and I may wrap that section of exhaust to see if we can, you know, obviously, if it hits, maybe it won't make noise. So uh, we'll get back to the shop, get it back on the lift, lift it up, and take a look at it. But before I do that, um, you're not going to hear the rattle. I'm going to do some wide-open throttle in front of the house so you guys can kind of hear what it sounds like that way
got this thing back on the lift after a couple rips there and guys look um i'm pretty sure the noise i'm hearing is this right here you see how long that thing is i'm gonna trim that off it's not gonna come out but i'm gonna cut that thing off with the cutoff wheel here's where i thought it was hitting you see right here where this transitions that's where i thought we were having our noise and i may still go ahead and wrap something around that but I don't really think that was the issue. I really, really think this is what I'm hearing. So let's trim that off first. And um, I really think that's our problem. Either way, I'm gonna trim that off. And then aside from that, I'll show you guys the wrap that I'm gonna use. Like I said, I think I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this area right here. I think it'd be a good idea just in case. Uh, nowhere else does it look like it's gonna touch, but I think if, you know, if the suspension were bouncing and whatnot, I think it may possibly hit there. And see, we've got that cut off now, and we still have ample room, guys. Like I said, I don't foresee it coming out. You can see the piece I cut off right, well, right there. And uh, just used a cutoff wheel on my grinder to get that thing off. I may put like a rubber, like a rubber cap on the end of it. See if I can get one on there. But either way, let's go grab this stuff that I got to heat wrap this. It's actually heat wrap, but you know, it, like I said, it kind of keeps it from vibrating up against stuff. So the things that we got, obviously I got some heat wrap, which I'll list in the description down below. I also got some metal, what they would consider metal zip ties. But the problem with these metal zip ties guys is if you don't have this tool to tighten them up, you're just, it's just a fight. And so I've had that issue in the past where I've used like an exhaust clamp to hold them. Uh, but we're gonna try this. This will be the first time I just bought this tool. It's relatively cheap, it's like eight bucks. And it's made by DEI, which is who makes like your heat wrap and whatnot. And so we're gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna probably wrap from starting right here and we'll come back to where we've got a nice clearance here. So all I'm going to do, some people get this wet. Um, I don't think guys it's necessary for what i'm doing in this situation to get it wet i don't know let me know in the comments if you guys have used this before if you um kind of get this stuff wet making it easier to wrap i i don't know sometimes people think that it it sets better if you do that what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to trim off a section with a pair of um shears i'm actually using metal shears i'm going to trim off a piece that i think is long enough uh just because there, there's to get the roll through here it would be incredibly hard so we'll just loop off what we think is good and then we'll cut it and start wrapping it around it so hopefully you guys can see what i'm doing um you could unroll the whole thing i guess but i'm trying to overlap it maybe by a half each time I go around. And so what I may do is I may go ahead and try to cinch up a clamp once I get away from the starting point, just to keep it snug while we're doing the rest of this. Cause it wants to walk around on you. And that's, I think maybe a, a reason why a lot of people choose to um, get it wet. So now that we've got that, let's see if we can use one of these metal zip ties and they do go a certain way guys let's see if we can zip tie this thing on here while i'm holding all this used to what i would do is um i would use a zip tie like a plastic zip tie problem with those is obviously they'd melt on exhaust but so we've got that on there and cinch down, so let's see how this tool works. It's basically threaded, or it's got a cutout in it. I think we're going the wrong way. We are. There we go. A little bit of a learning curve here. We need to be pulling it this way. There we go. Holy cow, yeah. Guys, this is what I needed. 
Holy crap. Yeah, I could have never, never gotten it that tight. Look at that. I can't even move it. Perfect. All right, so I'm gonna use a pair of uh, channel locks. Oh, uh-oh, spoke too soon. Maybe I got too much on it. Um, I was gonna say I'm gonna use a pair of cutters to cut that tail off. I don't think they're meant to have that much torque on them. So what I may do is, since I've got it snug down at least, we'll leave, we'll leave the tail on for now. Of course now it's moving. Um, but then we'll go ahead and wrap it. I won't get the next one quite as tight. I really, really cinch down on that one. I don't think we need that much. So I may end up cutting that one off, but let's go ahead and wrap it the rest of the way and uh, then we'll try again. The stuff that I'm using actually came with some clamps and they're a little smaller. The, I bought some bigger ones because I thought, um, obviously we're gonna do that bigger part of the exhaust up there, but we're gonna see if these work a little better. Like I said, I, I don't think, maybe they're not bad. Maybe it's just I put too much on them because you can pull them this tool, while you can snug them down, you can't get them like crazy tight, apparently. I think I can live with that. Moving a little bit, but it should stay in place. And I think I'm going to cut this old one off and put two. I already put, I put two on the back one. I'm just using metal shears to cut them, guys, if you're wondering. Uh, but I may put, I may cut this one off and put a second one on. Just not getting them as snug as I want to. Got it addressed. Look guys, okay, so that tool that I'm using, here's what I've discovered. Uh, if you have a longer one, so a, like a longer lead on your metal strap, come back as far as you can and hold this with your thumb or your hand while you're cranking it. My problem with the first couple that I did was that I cranked it too tight and I was up against where it's cinching down and it snapped this apart because it put too much torque on it. But I've got three, I'm gonna cut, I've got two of them that are really tight and so I'm gonna cut the other ones off. But I wanted to kind of talk about that because it is a pain. Now look, it isn't gonna hurt anything to keep them all on here, but see how we still have a little bit of movement back here? I don't love that. But at the same time, it's not going anywhere. You know, it may, it may creep around. You can see how loose this one is right here. Um, I'm gonna cut that one off. But the outer one, is, it's pretty snug. Well, I say that, this is the snuggest one out of the bunch. But either way, like I said, don't get up against this guy or it'll just snap those things. You can put more torque on it than what they'll hold. I just got back from another drive and guys, all the vibration's gone. All the noise is gone. Now I have developed some new vibrations inside the truck, but that was actually happening with the stereo. But now when the thing's sitting there idling, I'm hearing it as well. So I only heard it before when like the bass hit or something, but it's that back panel behind the seat. Now remember we did kill mat on the whole truck, but I didn't put it on any of the panels. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna pull that panel off behind the seat and we're gonna put some kill mat on it. And then the little pieces, the little tabs that snap in for like the safety latch setup. But either way, I'm happy with it, guys. Look, um, it's not annoyingly loud. It's not quiet. Like I said, I'd give it a four out of 10 as far as like interior resonance when you're going 60 miles an hour down the highway. I can deal with that. Um, but when you get in it, man, it sounds so much better. You guys heard that when we were ripping on it, but I, like I said, I'm happy, guys. Look, this sounds very, very similar to me to Magnaflow. Now, look, Magnaflow is a great exhaust. I use it on a lot of stuff, but it's about 1100. Sometimes you can catch it on sale for like in the 900s for these trucks. I think that's it's a lot of money for you know a short piece of pipe and a muffler and a turndown. You know, so I thought we'll give this a try. I've never tried their exhaust. Now, look, will the stainless hold up? It is stainless. It's three inch. I think it probably will. I've not driven all these things that I've used speed engineering stuff on in the rain and whatnot, guys. So I don't know, like, as far as 
longevity if you're driving it in the rain the salt and whatnot we're not going to be doing that with this truck so i think it'll last a really long time i think it's going to look really good it's obviously polished and so anyway let me know what you guys think we've got um, another thing knocked out on the green truck i i've been wanting to do this for a while like i said driving the step side has really made me want some sort of exhaust or this sound a little better uh, i will tell you this guys when you have exhaust on them, it makes you drive them a little more crazy than you would normally when it didn't have exhaust. I will, I will tell you that. I drive stuff with stock exhaust slow like an old man, and then it seems like the kid in me, when I hear exhaust, I want to rip on it. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please, like always, smash that thumbs up button. Guys, if you are not subscribed, you got to go down there and get subscribed. We got lots of stuff coming on several of these vehicles. So while you're down there doing all that, of course, ring the bell icon. That notifies you every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on next.